Hello everyone, my name is Chris and I want to welcome you to church today. I am so, so glad that you've chosen to be with us here right now. Before we get started, I have a question for you. Are you honest with God? A while back, our church went through a sermon series called Guardrails, and we dealt with the idea that we need certain guardrails in all of our lives. We talked about how the good guardrails can keep the right things out and let the right things in. Recently, I had a discussion with some other Christians about the fact that sometimes it's just hard to be honest with God, to let Him know that we're either disappointed with life, sad, unfulfilled, afraid, or even sometimes that we're angry at God. Do you ever feel that way? It's just hard to tell God what we're thinking sometimes. Maybe you don't think it matters to Him, or maybe you're worried that you'll offend Him, or maybe you just don't think it's worth the effort. He already knows, right? I have been there, and so many of my other Christian friends have been there as well. You see, when I had this discussion with them, we all shared that we kept certain thoughts or emotions from God. But we also agreed that when we finally brought these emotions to Him, it was always worth it. And God always met us there. So today, that's what I want you to do during worship. Bring your honest and true emotions to God. Tell Him how you feel. Tell Him honestly and see God meet you there in that moment. So today, right now, is the perfect time to start this. During worship, bring your honest feelings to God. Let's worship. Let me out of the desert Brought me into his dreams River of living water Turned my bitter into sweet All my burdens are lifted He took the shackles off my feet There's no sound louder than a captive set free So let the redeemed of the Lord say so his promises evermore. Pour out your thankfulness, let it overflow, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. There was joy in the a life worth living Cause he calls me his own There's a hallelujah After sweet victory There's no sound louder than a captive set free Oh, there's no sound louder than a captive set free So let the redeemed of the Lord Sing of His promises evermore. 
Thank you for the music, worship team. And thank you for being here to worship God with us. Now we will continue worship with the act of giving. And let me just say that if you're new here or if you're new to church in general, no one is asking you here for your money. Just let this moment pass you by. But if you've been attending Estero Church for a while, then you know why we give and that what it means to give you know that by giving, you are taking a step in obedience to God and taking a step by being the hands and feet of Jesus. If you're listening to this and you're not too sure how you feel about giving in general, let me just encourage you, take this moment instead to just invite God into the conversation and follow what he tells you to do with your money. If you would like to give in this way, you can do so by clicking the link in the chat or by going to our website and clicking the button at the top of the page that says give. With that, let's join together for our sermon today from Pastor Grace. Good morning, Online Church. I am Pastor Grace, and I'm delighted to be here with you this morning. And I wanted to introduce you to me through my testimony, or as I like to call it, my rescue story, how I met Jesus. So my story begins 35 years ago when I was pregnant with my first child. And I had grown up in a home that believed in God, and I knew the God stories, and I prayed to God. But there was just something missing, and I really wasn't sure what it was that was missing. 
And one day, as I was nine months pregnant, I was ironing. Yes, I love to iron. I like to see the results. But I was ironing and I had our little black and white TV on. And there was a man named Billy Graham. And Billy Graham was telling me about a relationship that you can have and told me the reason why Jesus came and died was so that I could have an intimate relationship with him and how much he loved me and that he came and died for my sins so that I can have eternal life with him. For some reason, I never understood that or never heard that. And that day, as just as I am was playing and people were coming forward to receive Jesus, I put down my iron and I walked up to my little black and white TV and I nailed, nailed down and received Jesus. That moment is always imprinted upon my heart. It's not that it was this dramatic experience or feeling but I know that day when I stood up, something had changed. And that something was, is I grew up thinking that God was up here and out here, and that he was sitting there waiting to just bring down the hammer or to judge me. And that day when I stood up, I realized he's here now. And he is now Abba the Father. He was my daddy now. It was a new relationship. It was intimate. And my life since then, 34 years later, has been a journey. There has been mountaintops, there's been valleys. But one thing I know is that place in my heart, that void that was there, became filled. And it was filled with the Holy Spirit, with God himself. And he has walked me through every valley and he's been with me on every mountaintop. And what I love is that little statement that they use in football, what makes a great football player, I think really plays into my testimony because I had a lot of head knowledge about God, but it never moved the 18 inches from my head to my heart until that day. And what I've learned is that he now has been transforming my heart in a thing called the sanctification process of transforming me continually for the last 34 years and for the next how many years I have to go into the workmanship that he's created, the handy work that he has created. And he's doing that for all of us. And what a blessed journey it is to be on with you. And as I think about that, I want to talk to you today about refreshment because I don't know about you, but there's many things happening in the world, wars, anxiety, depression, suicides, broken relationships, prodigals, sickness, illness. And some days I just need to be refreshed by him. And one place I go to every single day is the Proverbs. There's 31 Proverbs, there's either 30 or 31 days in every month, so I always read a proverb a day. You'd think now, after 34 years, I would have it memorized, but you know the greatest thing about his word is that it's living. And so every time I read it, there's always a new thing, something new. But I go there because it's the book of wisdom. And one of the verses that has always stood out to me is in Proverbs. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. And so today we're gonna to sit in another Proverbs that is my favorite, and it is in Proverbs 11.25 that says, a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. So let's pray. Father, we are looking for your refreshment today through the power of your word. I pray that the Holy Spirit will come and stir in each one of our hearts your word, that it will transform us that it will speak to us. Oh Lord, let every word be the words from you and not the words from my own mouth. But may you be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to break down this verse. And it says, a generous person will prosper. That's the first part of the verse. So we're going to define generous. 
as you give more of something. Someone who gives is generous. And what's talking about here is the giving of love. The giving of love. You cannot be loving without being generous. And Jesus is the greatest example of that. John 3, 16, a very familiar verse, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus gave. He gave his life for you and me and for the whole world. So he is the perfect example of that perfect love. Sometimes we get confused about love and giving. We get confused that it's conditional. Well, Jesus' love is not conditional. And that word give and giving and love is defined for us in 1 Corinthians 13 because it says love is kind, it's patient, it doesn't keep records of wrong. These are all action words. So giving and love is an action. So that word give is very important. And you wonder why I keep using the word give. Well, in the Bible, there's all these key words. I love the details that God places there. And so I looked up a whole bunch of words that you think would be used a lot. And this is very intriguing to me. The word believe is used 272 times. Pray, which is so important, is used 371 times. Love, now you'd think this one's big, and it is, 714 times. But the word give, it's used 2,152 times. That's a word we need to pay attention to because it means something. Everything that we have is given to us by God. Absolutely everything. And sometimes I think we forget that. And there is a great story that I remember taking my kids to McDonald's to get a Happy Meal when they were little. Because Happy Meals make everybody happy, right? Well, I was there and there was another mom there and I saw her in the booth and she'd gotten her kids Happy Meals with French fries and she'd gotten herself chicken nuggets, but she didn't get any fries for herself. And as she was sitting there, she must have decided, oh, those fries look really good. And she reached over and grabbed one fries from her daughter's fry bag. Well, there was a major temper tantrum that ensued from there. That is my fry! Those are my fries! You took my fry! Well, what the little girl did not realize is who had given her the fries? Who had paid for the fries? Who had provided the food? The mom. And then in there I realized, oh, that is like our Heavenly Father. That's like God. He provides everything to us. He is generous and overflowing in His love. And the one thing is, is that I wonder if we recognize that. Because sometimes circumstances and things in our life, things get taken away or things become stressful. But ultimately, He's trying to create us to be unselfish. He's trying to create us to be like Jesus, who gave His life for us, the most unselfish act there is. So we need to remember that God doesn't need us. God desires us. And God gives us this incredible, incredible gift of love. And so as we continue to move on with this being generous person that it says at the beginning of Proverbs 11.25, it comes with a promise. It says, a generous person will prosper. Now this doesn't mean that all of a sudden you're going to get rich. This prosper has a lot to do with our spiritual life, our emotional life. It's about the kingdom of God. And when we're generous, there's three things that happen. The first thing is we honor God because it's a spiritual act of worship to give that love. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. This is your proper worship. So we honor God. In 2 Corinthians 9, 13 says, Because of the service by which you have proved yourself, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone. 
That's the gift that you have, that you get to share the gospel. And as you share the gospel by living your life in light of it, you honor God. The second thing is, it builds intimacy. It builds intimacy with God. This brings you closer to Him. Because we know that whatever we invest in is what's important to us. Matthew 6, 21 says, Wherever your treasure is, there the desire of your heart will also be. Where is your heart? You know, frequently I try to examine, take a week and list everything that I do. To examine where is my heart, because what I give my time to is where my heart is. And also looking at your checkbook. Seeing where you're giving your money is where your heart is also. So you build intimacy because of the treasure of giving generously through that means of love, which means everything that you have in your life. And I thought about, where's Jesus' heart? Where was Jesus' heart? What was Jesus' treasure? And that brings such a smile to my face because that treasure is you and me. That's where his heart was. It was to do do the will of the Father and to die for you and I. His heart and intimacy with the Father should be the reflection of our hearts. So the the third thing is, is the transformation. So there's three things that honor God, build intimacy with God, but then it also brings transformation. It brings transformation for us to become more like Jesus. Proverbs 21, 26 says, Some people are always greedy for more, but the godly love to give. Generosity is in our attitude. Jesus shows us that perfect, perfect attitude. He shows us what it means. He didn't do anything other than what the Father told him to do. Jesus was generous, and he shows us how to live that life out. Now, there is a second part of this verse. And so this second part, it says a generous person will prosper in Proverbs eleven twenty five, And now we're going to talk about the second part. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Well, when I think of fresh, I think about when I was first introduced to Krispy Kreme. I did not know that all of a sudden that bright light that says fresh in the window meant something until someone told me that. And they told me that it represents that when they get a fresh batch of donuts out, they put that light on. And I said, well, I mean, I've had a Krispy Kreme donut. She says, would you have you had a fresh Krispy Kreme donut? I had not had a fresh Krispy Kreme donut. And so I stopped one day when I saw that light go on and I went in and oh my goodness. <laughs> The difference between an hour-old or two-day-old donut and a fresh donut is amazing. It's tasty, and it's mushy, and it's sweet, and it's good. So when I think about being refreshed, I think about the freshness, the freshness that comes through the power of Jesus. And what I realize is there's a refreshment cycle. And that refreshment cycle, and you'll see that on your screen, is about refueling, getting refreshed, and releasing it. And what it means, it means that when we refuel, it means that we receive more and more of the Spirit. That is something that God gives us, because we cannot do anything on our own. It's only through the power of His Spirit. And that as we receive the Spirit, we are made to then give it out. And that's how we refresh others, is by pouring that generous love out to others. And as we do that, we release the power of the Holy Spirit. And the one thing we'll see about this cycle, it has no beginning and it has no end, just like God. This refreshing cycle is continuous. You can never be too overfilled with His Spirit. You can never give out more, because He's always there to continue to give it out to us. And you know, the cross is a really great example. I always now look around, and you know what? If you look around anywhere, you will see a cross. And it just is a continual reminder that we need to be looking upward to receive from God, to be open to God, and to get the bubbling joy of the Spirit in us. And then the horizontal part of the cross is for us to go and touch and release that to others. 
And this is something that he's called us to do. Because in Matthew 6.10 it says, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This isn't a future thing. This is a now thing. It's a now thing. And how is a now thing to bring the kingdom here on earth? It's through us. Through us and the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we have to do as the Father commands us to do, to walk in that power. You know, Jesus brought life to those around him in healing, in words of encouragement, in the ability to feed them, to cast the demons out and to have freedom. Well, that power, that dunamis power, that resurrection power of the Holy Spirit lives inside of you and me. And we are called to do that so that we can refresh one another. And the gospel, Jesus' death and resurrection, and the gift of eternal life is a way of refreshing others and bringing them to that kingdom. Now, there's this example. While I was in Israel, I um, have been praying for Israel as this war is going on. And my heart is there in Israel as I've taken three different tours over to Israel and taking people there. And on the second trip that I took people there, I realized there is a great picture, a great object lesson laid right there. And it's the object of three bodies of water. Because this refreshment cycle is important. Because you have to receive and then you have to give. There's this Jordan River, the Sea of Galilee, and the Dead Sea. The Jordan River receives and the Jordan River gives to the Sea of Galilee. And the Sea of Galilee then continues with the Jordan River. And then the Jordan River then pours in to the Dead Sea. Each body receives and gives, receives and gives until you get to the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea does not give, it only receives and it's dead. All the other bodies are living and have life in them. The Dead Sea is dead. We don't want to be the Dead Sea. We want to receive the living water and pour out the living water. I have this example. The Holy Spirit pours out the living water until it's empty. But the one thing about God, this vase might seem empty, but just like God, He keeps giving us more and more. He keeps filling us up over and over and over again. His Spirit continues to wash us and to cleanse us and to give us the power to do what He's called us to do. And our place is to give it out. So I know you're saying, okay, Pastor Grace, how do we practically do this? In Ephesians 5, 18 through 20, it says, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Singing, make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It says, be filled. That be filled there is in the active tense. It means to continually be filled. Continually go to that living water fountain and to receive and receive. It's something we have to continually do. It is that cycle of refreshment. So this is it. This verse tells us that if we refresh, that we will be refreshed, which means He will do it for us. Proverbs 11.25, a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. This is a challenge. It's a challenge for all of us. And as we are here, I think, okay, what do we fill our bucket with? Because a lot of times we fill our bucket maybe with right things but are they life-giving things? Because we need to continually be before the Lord and ask Him to fill us with His Spirit so that we can pour out to others and to continue to be refreshed. 
I'm sure Jesus was refreshed as he continued to do the ministry, and he'll do that for us. So my question always is, what now? What do we do with this? So I'm going to challenge you. This is the challenge. I want you to do one generous thing this week. And if you're naturally a generous person, I want you to go over the top in your generosity. I want you to apply what you learn in this scripture. And there's three things I'm going to have you do. One, you're going to ask. You're going to ask each day to be filled with the Spirit. Ask each day just to be continually filled. You know, my prayer every morning is that as we all wake up as believers, I pray that the power of the Holy Spirit will move and work in us and it'll make the devil quiver because we have victory through Jesus. So ask each day to be filled. The second thing is I'm going to ask you to ask God to give you a practical way to do this. You know, ask and you shall receive. So if you don't know what you should do to be able to be generous, ask God. He'll tell you. He'll put that person in your place. And sometimes generosity is just listening to someone or giving them a hug or sending a note. But above all, the third thing I want you to do is to do it, to live in the spirit of generosity, to live in the spirit of allowing God to speak to you, to pour out, to refresh you, and then for you to release it and refresh others and then be filled again. And I want to encourage you to listen. Just take some time and step back. Because God is always speaking. It's just whether we're tuned in to Him. Just like with a radio, there's lots of static until you just fine-tune it. So I want you to have ears to hear Him. And I want to give you an example because sometimes God is speaking, but we have to be obedient. We have to follow through on that. Um, a couple years back, I had um, lived out in the country. And so to go to the grocery store was about 20 to 25 minutes away. And I was having a dinner party and I went to the grocery store and I'd gotten a beautiful bouquet of flowers that I was going to use as a centerpiece for my table um, that night. And as I was driving back, usually my drive time is where I put on the radio and sing praises to the Lord, and I keep one hand on the wheel usually, and then um, I also pray. And so as I was going and everything, all of a sudden, I felt this prompting that say that I needed to take the flowers to this woman that lived in town. And I is stubborn sometimes, being this Italian, I ended up sitting there and I had this discussion with the Lord. I'm like, okay, I don't have enough time to go back to the store and I need the flowers for my table because it's the perfect color for my color coordination for my table setting. I will go and get flowers and bring it to her tomorrow. Well, the prompting still was in my heart and I didn't know why, it just was there. And I had come up to the crossroad where I could go left to go to my house or go right to this woman's house. Now, I didn't know this woman very well, but I knew where she lived. And as I got to that road, I had to make a choice to be obedient or not. And I am so glad I chose to go right and go to her door. But I still was skeptical. So I pulled into her driveway and I'm like, it's all dark. See, God, it's all dark. She's not even here. But I got out of the car with the flowers and went to the door. I knocked on the door. And you know what? She didn't answer. And I was like, see, she's not here. And as I turned to go back to my car, the door opened. And here was this woman standing with total tears. You can tell that she had been crying. And I turned around and I said, God told me to bring these flowers to you. She started crying more. And she said, you will not believe this, but I was just laying on my bed, totally laid out, crying, because I have this crisis in my life right now. And I was doubting God. And I asked God, and I told God, if you love me and you see me, I want to know it. 
and then there was a knock at the door. Now that had nothing to do with me. It all had to do with the Father. And if I would have been disobedient, he would have gotten somebody else. But I was privileged to be there and to see him move and work and show his love to one of his children. That's what I want for each one of us. And that's what I ask for each day. Because it's really not about us at all. It's about the power of the Spirit. So even if it sounds crazy or it's silly, just do it. Ask for the filling. Ask for the generous moment and then do it because we want to be a fresh donut and we don't want to be a dead sea. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, this morning that you give us all that we need through the power of the Holy Spirit. I ask as these precious ones go forth this week, that you will fill them, that you will give them practical ways to be generous, and that they will testify to one another as the testimony of your saints builds our faith. I pray right now, Lord, for those that need a touch of your refreshment, either physically or emotionally, that you will touch them, that you will guide them. Father, you're the God of the living hope. May we walk forth in that power. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you. Have a wonderful week. And I look forward to hearing some testimonies about how God refreshed you as you refreshed others. Let us walk in that hope. Have a great week. Thank you for the message, Pastor Grace. So church, did God meet you in this moment today? Did you invite him in? The great thing about God is if you didn't invite him in today, that's okay. If you didn't open yourself up to the relationship with him today, that's okay. Because tomorrow, he'll come knocking on your door. The day after that, he'll come knocking. The day after that, he'll come knocking. Because the truth is that God just wants the real you. So take a chance and give it to him. With that, receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Thanks for being with us today. A wonderful week.